So many messages coming in regarding the situation surrounding David Coote. Top referee David Coote, because a second video has been released into the public domain, allegedly showing the referee David Coote snorting a white powder during during Euro 2024. It comes just days after Coote was suspended by the PGMOL, following a video involving him making derogatory comments about Liverpool and the former manager Jurgen Klopp. And um, before we return to the former head of the PGMOL, Keith Hackett. A number of questions being asked, Simon. Um, they're asking me to ask you from a whole bunch of listeners this morning. What does Simon think, Jim? What was it? What's the more damaging of the two videos? Coot on the first hand, uh, having a go at Klopp and having a go at Liverpool and ha having a go about Klopp being a German, or the second one about uh, the the pictures of him allegedly snorting a white powder during Euro 2024. Which of the two is the more damaging? Well, I mean, I, I I think probably the first one, even though I defended the right for him to be redeemed, the second one just compounds the issue. I mean, we see people in sport making these lifestyle choices and people wrap their arms around them. So if you, if you saw, saw a referee, uh, saw David Coote being solely um, having a video released about him taking cocaine, the reaction to Mark Bosnich or the reaction to Adrian Mutu or the reaction to Kel Brook was one, this person needs help. He needs support. He needs an opportunity to be able to find his way back. Because the referee and fraternity doesn't enjoy that public endearment, it gets an alternate reaction. So it's a combination of the two. You can't separate them because they both exist. But yeah. from a point of view of integrity of the refereeing fraternity, it's the first video that does the most damage. Well, at the moment, as you might imagine, Howard Webb and the PGMOL in the eye of a storm, their latest statement... We are aware of the allegations and are taking them very seriously. David Coote remains suspended pending a full investigation. David's welfare continues to be of the utmost importance to us and we are committed to providing him with the ongoing necessary support he needs through this period. We are not in a position to comment further at this stage. Um, you won't be surprised to hear that we have tried to get a hold of Howard Webb, but they're sticking to that line at this moment. So many uh, supporters around the country have their own view of what is going on regarding David Cook, what's going on with referees, what's going on with the PGMOL. And um, before we return to Keith Hackett, I'm going to go to Ben, who's a Liverpool fan. Ben, good morning. What do you want to say about this? Good morning. First of all, great show. Um, two points very quickly. One, Thanks, I also care about people's welfare. That's paramount to everything. But more importantly, to my point right now, PGM All in 2020 made the decision to take David Koo for the best part of four years off of Liverpool matches. So to suggest, and I agree with almost everything Simon ever said, but to suggest that this is a singular issue and there's no empirical evidence to suggest this corruption within the PJML is just fundamentally wrong. If they knew about this video four years ago and only decide to take action once it becomes in the public domain, that questions everything about the corruption, the integrity, about the PJML from the bottom to the but top. Why, why, do you use the word, why do you use the word corruption? I mean, what benefits is it? What well, benefit is it to the PGML? Disadvantage to Liverpool. What's the benefit of hiding it? What's the benefit of hiding it? I'm not just talking about Liverpool here because we could talk about every Premier League manager and every referee. But let's just suggest for the for the moment that it is just David Coo. Then why would yep. the PJ Mall hide that information for four years until it's forced into the public light by whoever's put it there? What would be the benefit of doing so? Again, I'd ask no you the, the terminology to corruption. I mean, ultimately, there has to be an ultimate beneficiary as a result of corruption. When you do something that you there corrupt is, people I, with, is because you're getting an outcome. Uh, Who benefits from this? And there's also no... Ben, there's no suggestion they hid the video. Well, they, they knew about the information. Why would they take David... You don't, you don't know that, nor do we. So no, I think that's a bit of supposition on your part there, so mate. Why did, they take him, why did they take him off four years ago? Why is he not refereed the Liverpool game for the best part of four years? What would be your... May, may, maybe, they, maybe they recognised there was some serious, significant... Um, compromise between the manager of Liverpool and the referee, and they thought it was a sensible decision to avoid them. Then why not make that decision with every ref? Because in the segment before, well, maybe there isn't the, quite the same break, vitriol between about, between. You made that point about mm. Arteta. Yeah, but maybe you there isn't the same, same vitriol. Maybe there was a deep dislike between Klopp and the referee. It was evident to the PGMO, and they took a professional decision to say, "Let's avoid that tinderbox." Yeah. Um, all I can say is, Ben, keep listening because former head of the PGMOL, former top referee himself, Keith Hackett, has returned to the show. Um, Keith, good morning once again. Thanks for staying with good us. Morning. Is this not a perfect example, Keith, of what we're going to get now? 
fan after yes, fan yeah. after fan calling out corruption. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, since the introduction of VAR and the poor performance of VAR, when referees are making errors, they're immediately saying corruption, corruption. It seems to be a growing trend. And sadly, the actions of David Coote have just put flames on the fire. Okay, can, and, I just, uh, can I just pull you for a second? I yeah. heard you say this the other day, but why do you keep saying the poor performance of VAR when statistically VAR has proven to be better? It might not be its perfect product, and it was brought in to help and facilitate solutions for you guys, but you keep on characterising it as poor. Yes, and the reason behind that, Simon, is that I, I think that our... Decisions that have come through the VAR in terms of the impact of VAR on the referee. Uh, and it's a, it's a whole debate surrounding, is VAR currently assisting referees? How has it impacted on the referees? And I think it's impacted negatively because it's promoted to some degree lazy refereeing, where there's, from refereeing point of view, an over-reliance. I also... I don't want to put into doubt the statistics. I don't have those to hand. But I do question when Howard Webb came out a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago, and said VAR has only made two errors. Then I think there needs to be a greater transparency on that matter, mm. on that fact. Okay, fair, fair enough. Referees generally are making errors. We've always made errors. And I think it's... The, if you like... The transparency, lack of it in VAR terms at the football grounds, uh, the speed at which offside decisions are made are slow, and where we think that VAR should have intervened and it does not, all adds to what I consider to be technology that is not helping the referee in the same way that goal line technology does. Okay, fair point. Keith, here's the thing. When you yes. were head of the PGMOL, did you consider yes. yourself responsible for the culture of the organisation? Yes, I did. Um, and perhaps, you know, with, a, with a, a business background as a director of a company and wanting to be the best. And, you know... We were going to a period then, and I'm going back to the early days of finishing my career and then suggesting that we needed to have professional referees on the basis that we raise standards. And I think standards have certainly been raised. Why is that? Sports science and all the things that come in. We've moved from an area where, let me tell you, I lost two jobs through refereeing football matches. That was my choice on one occasion to get back to a board meeting, it cost me a couple of grand charging an aircraft to get back. Again, my choice. I think with professional refereeing, people don't have the real insight as to what goes on and the performance analysis that takes place. You know, it is detailed, it is thorough, and referees, when they make errors, it, it's discussed, and hopefully then they don't repeat the errors. How's, well, how do you think, because yeah. the, the, the onus is going to switch on to Howard Webb, his control yeah. and the direction of travel that happens next. How do you think Howard should be handling the uh, the imminent mm. onslaught of observation and the direction of travel of the PGMOL now? Well, I think, firstly, Howard Webb is a very good communicator. I think, Simon, and this is just an observation without without any sort of facts, I think he needs... He's inherited a lot of people... Uh, that were, uh, if you like, working for uh, Mike Riley. And I think some of those people perhaps don't like or like the the knowledge uh, to be able to advance its course. My, my view is he needs to sur surround himself with some other people. I think from his point of view, he just needs to step back and concentrate on getting the referees who are performing well out into the games. And I, I, I think this is about communication with the clubs, um, with the managers, and, and with the board of the PGMOL. I want to thank you again, Keith, for, for coming on and speaking with such uh, honesty. Um, it, it's a crisis, isn't it? 
this is a crisis a facing this organisation and facing refereeing in this country. Of that, there is no doubt, surely, Keith. They've never known anything like this. No, we haven't. Uh, yet I think that I think Simon's view of it should be listened to very carefully. I think that this is one bad apple potentially in the barrel, and it is affecting the outcome of the vision of fans who just want to jump onto the bandwagon and have a go at every one of them. We've got some excellent referees. Howard just needs to give them a bit more guidance, support, and, and you know, look to improve performance and reduce the errors. Should they not have seen the bad apple, though, a bit long before now, Keith? Yeah, but, I mean, Howard's only been in the job eight, about 18 months. Um, and, you know, how close are you? We, it, this is not like a football club, the PGMOL. The referees come in every couple of weeks. Uh, they meet and then they discuss. We're not following the referee day in, day out. Look, the fact that David Coote has gone through this process is alarming. When you consider the amount of effort that he himself has put in to get to the elite level of refereeing, this is probably 10 to 12 years in its in its operation. Sure. And yeah. it's it's sad that when they get to the top level, you know, some want to be living in the same world as football players. They need to understand their responsibility. The promotion of integrity is important. But the only way we'll win back confidence is improving standards on the football field and for fans to be a little bit patient. And I I think the, the big issue for me is how VAR is communicated to the fans inside the stadium. OK, Keith, we, not for the first time. Matter. Thank you yeah. so much for your time, Keith. We thank took you. more of it than we intended, but thank you very much indeed for your time uh, and your... your uh, uh, and your content this morning. That was Keith Hackett, the former head of the PGMOL. What is next for this organisation? What is next for Howard Webb? What is next for referees in this country? Where are we at with it? Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.